All right, so another video for the how-to series. This is going to be a maintenance-focused video. So if you've got a tune from me, Right Brain Design, or if you're just trying to maintain your vehicle properly, this is almost always specific to rotary stuff. So I'm going to put that out there. It's very important. Here is what I would suspect the problem that most people come across and they don't realize it's an issue. I have seen spun bearings as a result. I have seen uh, eccentric shafts split in half now. Hmm. So if you get an extreme case of this, there are huge, huge damages that can occur. So what am I talking about? Fuel dilution. Super simple. You check your oil. Now, people don't understand checking your oil. You're not looking at a dipstick. You're not just doing this stuff. You're feeling it in your hands. You're smelling it. You don't have to taste it because you should have those two senses kind of down. If it smells like pump gas or E85, it's probably time to change the oil. Okay? If you check your dipstick and you're not wiping the dipstick before you actually read the level, the second you get that out, wipe it off, put it right back in, pull it out again. That's a much more accurate measurement. And since we all have oil coolers, you want to do this hot. Because there's really no point in doing it cold. Uh, <laughs> your oil level is going to be more accurate when the vehicle has been on. Turn off the car, check the oil then. So, when you check it, you're going to feel for lubricity. Um, does it stick? Does it have any kind of stiction to it? The It's so weird that people are, are not understanding. Like, You'll feel if it's slick in your hand. You'll feel um, any gumminess. I hope you don't feel any metal shards because that would be really bad. But feeling, number one. Number two, smelling it for fuel dilution. And why does fuel dilution occur? Okay. As a thermal control for rotary engines, they're run at a richer target AFR than reciprocating uh, similar engines. It is not needed for most. Okay. It is done as a safety factor. When you read plugs a lot, which is the next part I'm going to get to, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about and why plug fouling is so problematic for these cars. So, realistically, if it's my engine and you let me do exactly what I wish to do, I'm going to run a leaner target AFR than the majority of the people that you would talk to. Um because I like the idea of not having fuel dilution in my oil to where instead of lubricating like oil would, fuel does not do that. Fuel will not, unless it's diesel, fuel will not um, do anything to protect your bearings um, or really keep things cooler or have additives for whatever you need for oil. For, in other words, like anti-foaming properties. When you have fuel dilution, your, your oil will start to foam more frequently. So that's a huge thing. When your oil starts to foam, um, it's going to make crankcase ventilation worse, less effective. And it all comes down to the simple fact of you need to have good quality oil in your motor. Um, that can also lead into our next discussion which I might do for the next video but I might just throw into this one it's uh, oil injection systems and synthetic oil I think I'm going to do everything in one so you guys kind of get a really good overview of how to properly maintain your vehicle all right so we're getting into spark plug stuff now and your spark plugs on a rotary engine if you have a set of factory spark plugs, they're not worth a shit for high mileage. 
when you're making an increase of power. So if your factory car made 200 horsepower and you're now making 400, it's not a changing spark plugs half as often or twice as often, but you're changing them about four times as often uh, just because it is not a linear relationship to power and lifespan of a particular component. So the spark plugs, if they're getting fouled, you'll see specifically why. And it's usually a richer air to fuel ratio that's causing such a thing. Like I said, personally, I like to lean out cars more. So spark plugs and oil last longer. Um, I have been known to do this and most of my clients will request a certain thing or based on their given application, I can dictate what is a better option for them. And it really does come down to how good you are at maintaining your vehicle. So if you don't mind going through a set of spark plugs two times a year, three times a year, depending on how much you drive, that's fine. If you're the guy who doesn't want to spend the $114 for a set of four race plugs or $30 or $40 for a set of basic plugs, which by the way, race plugs will last about five times longer than the non-race plug stuff. So bear that in mind when you're looking at the price and you're like, oh, it's 114 or I've seen them up to $160 for a set of four plugs. And it's like, well, yeah, but if it lasts five times longer than the one you're getting for, let's say, $30, $40, it really does work out pretty well. And the spark is usually cleaner than a result of that. So you'll make a little bit more power for the majority of that span. So fuel dilution, huge thing. Know how to check your oil. Spark plugs check them frequently. If you're a client of mine, I always want to see pictures and where the location is for each spark plug. So you'll say leading one, trailing one, leading two, trailing two, leading three, trailing three, so on and so forth. So send those pictures as a very specific idea. And I can say, oh, we have our trailing coil spark duration too long. I need to shorten that up. It's having a misfire event. Hmm, that's weird. I was just going to CDI because of the RPM that we're running. Or, I'll say, the ceramic is black, and it's black three quarters of an inch down. We need to take out some fuel. Our wide bin might be reading leaner than it actually is because with boost pressure, on the last video you guys might have learned that, um, with boost pressure, wideband accuracy changes and if it's not compensated for in the ECU it needs to be compensated for me you know I, I need to handle it because as we go up and boost the accuracy of what is rich and what is lean spreads away from the baseline of the sensor so that's that um, you've got spark plugs check them frequently know what to look for. Um, any browning of the spark plug is a misfire event. White is, you know, lean. You've got black, and that's a rich event. And, uh, yeah, overall you kind of get an idea of how to read a spark plug. It's not just the surface and the surface finish, but more so what the ceramic is doing below that. That's a much more accurate way of reading the plug. Um, and it does depend on your oil injection, which you should all be running, regardless if you have a working oil metering pump or not. Um, the oil metering pump is a great tool. It dribbles oil exactly where you need it. Um, it works especially well for diesel, where now you can actually cut the fuel, save a little bit on gas mileage. The savings on gas mileage is actually quite a bit. Um, if we're doing, let's say, a half second delay from when you let off the throttle 
toward reclosing the injector, I've seen an upwards of four to five miles per gallon change of doing that versus keeping the injector open close to stoichiometric air to fuel ratios on a D cell. So four to five miles per gallon is pretty substantial. Um, I definitely see that as a worthwhile thing. So if you keep the oil metering pump and you're using it with a oil injection style tank with a RA adapter, um, I mean, it's the best of all worlds. You're getting the oiling when you need it. You're not getting an excessive amount. And the total quantity that your engine needs, because now it's in the right position, is lower. So let me explain that a little bit better. Let's say we're at 450 horsepower. I'm advising you based on your apex seal that you have, let's say a dryer seal. And I want you to put one and a half ounces per gallon of premix, whether it's TCW3 or whether it's, you know, something E85 like a Super Techno Plate Light. As you're putting that in there, it's going through your fuel system, it's going through your fuel pumps, your filter, all your lines. Usually, there's never an issue. One of these days, it might become something that doesn't mix perfectly, it sits in your tank, um, or possibly clogs something. I have not seen that yet. However, now you're putting one and a half ounces per gallon in every time. That's a little spendy. It's going through, injecting with the injectors as best it can, as mixed as it can. And in that scenario, it's going in during the fuel charge. And it's lubricating your intake manifold. It's getting through there. It could be pooling in certain spots. It could be causing the fuel to be vaporizing differently. It could affect acceleration enrichment if you're heavily based on, let's say, E85. You have an evaporative property of E85 or any alcohol fuel. And if you have oil added to that, it could be changing the way that the engine is perceiving what it needs. So your pure fuel quantity of what's there is actually incorrect because now you're adding a little bit of oil to that. But I digress. I'm, I'm going to jump back around to the quantity of an ounce and a half. And if you have an OMP, you might be able to reduce that to 0.75 ounce per gallon and have the same amount of protection on the engine, on the internals, because now you have the oil dribbling in where it needs to be going. The fuel quantity will be more accurate because you don't have oil carried as much with it. And the, the overall function of the engine is better. You're using less oil. Your oil metering pump is only going to go through so much oil that you're going to have in a reservoir. It's going to be a lot less than what you're adding to the premix to get the same effective cooling and protective quantities or, or properties. So that's the next thing. So. Not every premix can be injected. Um, there are very specific brands that will say, do not inject this fluid. This is a whatever for a specific style function. But what I do want to get down to is be very cautious of if you're running ethanol fuels, there are very few brands that can handle ethanol fuel without having a separation in your fuel tank. Um, this is this is going to be a balance of protection of the engine and gumminess. So let me take a step back and explain that better. Benol, 
castor bean oil is going to be very sticky on the inside of the engine if you do not have a sustained high RPM function. Some of the full synthetic fluids have very little to none benol, but they're having a very similar protective quality. And that would be something like the Redline alcohol, the Super Technoplate light, uh, those two in particular are fantastic at protection, but are not going to be sticking on the inside of your intake manifold runner, your rotor housings, stuff like that, because of the way that they're formulated. I don't want to say castor bindle is the cheaper option, because it's not cheap, but it is the most protection you can get per dollar of whatever you know, fluid is going to the injection side for oil. The issue is, of course, the gumminess that it can create for the long-term duration of the engine. So I've moved people away from Benol on, super, on the Klotz Benol stuff. I've moved them away from Super Technoplate, which is a blended 20% uh, Benol and 80% uh, I think it's a synthetic variant. And now I'm moving them onto a light, which is a zero benol, I believe. And it's a more expensive product, but it will have no stickiness after, let's say, 30,000 mile breakdown for refreshing or whatever you're trying to do. So that is the, the right choice for me. It makes way more sense to have a high-end fluid that does not create any stickiness of the components on the inside of the engine. Um, the one thing we always want to worry about when we have <clears throat> a higher horsepower output is, you know, EA5 will clean anything it touches. It can create stickiness in itself, if especially if it's sitting or there are not stainless steel components being used or whatever it is, it can create the same stickiness that we're trying to avoid for the inside of the engine. And I should probably explain, we don't want the engine to stick because all of, all, all of our seals are a very tightly toleranced um, part of the operation. So if a side seal sticks, right, that takes out one whole rotor face. If an apex seal sticks, that takes out two out of our six for a three rotor um, faces. So we're, we're losing a massive amount of combustion efficiency because now since we we're going and reducing the effectiveness of our rotor as it goes around. The gumminess of course can go into other things but the main things being our corner seals, our side seals, and our apex seals. We want to keep any sort of gumminess, so they should be free play to allow the thing to move properly during um, the combustion event where an apex seal actually rocks back and forth and a corner seal kind of moves in and out and a side seal moves up and down to hold the combustion event. So all of these have to be free floating. And if they are not, then we have massive problems. So the oil additive for your upkeep has to be a good fluid. If you want things to last for a long time, you're losing it out. You have a supercar of an engine that needs exotic materials added into it. So bear that in mind with your operational cost, um, a standard outboard TCW3 works great for pump gas. It's going to smoke. It's going to be blue and hazy, but it will never ever come up. It'll never ever have problems with cooling, and that's why it's been working in such high quantities for so many years on all these outboard motors and not having a problem. When you go to E85 and anything alcohol-based, that's when things get expensive. That's when your power output per displacement goes up substantially, so 
you're expecting that anyways, or you should be. That's when you're going on race plugs, almost a mandatory anyways, because you need to break through that. That's when CDI becomes the thing to focus on, because that's what you need it for, making more power cleanly. And I explained CDI in one of the other videos and why, how the combustion event, especially on the trailing plug, is so vital. So check your spark plugs. Know how to read your spark plugs. Check your oil. Smell your oil. Feel your oil. Don't taste that shit. <laughs> and uh, realistically, that's rotary upkeep in a nutshell. What to focus on. Um, I can go over again the oil injection and the quantities needed, but I'll normally advise for a particular application, apex seal, um, your usage of the vehicle, I'll tell you the oil I recommend, the quantities of premix that I recommend for that oil. And if you have an OMP, we get to cut those quantities down substantially because they're oiling where it needs to be at the right event. So I think that just about covers it. I had three main talking points on that for rotary upkeep. And uh, it's a little bit longer video, but I think you guys will get it. So cheers. I'll catch you in the next one. And uh, much more non-talking head style videos coming up very soon.